Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video we're going to talk about the growth and development of a preschooler. And this video is part of an NCLEX review series over pediatric nursing and as always whenever you get done watching this YouTube video you can access the free quiz that will test you on this content. So let's get started. The preschooler includes the age range between three to five years of age. Now to help us remember all those important concepts we need to know about the preschoolers growth and development, let's remember the word preschool. So first, P, we're talking about physical changes. So our preschooler has went from toddlerhood to now preschoolhood. And in the previous reviews, we talked about the growth and development of the infant and toddler. So with the preschooler, what you have is that they're changing physically. They're starting to look more like a little kid. They're gonna start losing that chubby little face. It's gonna become more defined. They're also gonna start losing that protruding belly as those muscles tighten up and their limbs start to elongate. So by the end of preschoolhood, you're gonna have a little child that is talkative, rambunctious, very active and social, and they're going to have their own little personality. Now, some physical things you want to remember about the preschooler is their height and their weight. So during this time period, they're not having that rapid growth like how they did whenever they were an infant. So it slows down a little bit. So weight wise, they'll gain about five pounds per year with an average weight for the preschooler towards the end of preschoolhood being about 42 pounds. Their height, they grow about three inches per year with the average height of a preschooler about 44 inches. And then we have gross and fine motor skills. So what are they able to do? So whenever we're talking about gross and fine, what's the difference? Well, gross motor skills require large muscle groups in order to complete that skill. So we're talking about skills like a preschooler should be able to ride a tricycle, they should be able to bounce and catch and throw a ball, run, hop, skip, and climb. And as they progress from three to four to five, these skills are gonna become really well established. Then we have fine motor skills. And these are skills that use those small muscles that allow us to do things like the preschooler should be able to write their first name, like copy it and write it. So see, you're using your little muscles to do that. They should be able to zip up their jacket, button up their shirt, um, cut with scissors, copy shapes, like basic shapes, like the triangle and the circle. And you can see all of these skills is preparing them for school. So then they'll become school age, which we'll review in our next lecture. Next is R for reduce separation anxiety. So we talked a lot about separation anxiety with the toddler because they really struggle with this. And this is where when the parent is removed from the child, the child will become extremely anxious and will cry and go through these different stages. So with the preschooler, the separation anxiety is going to occur, especially in that three-year-old, but it tends to disappear by the ages of four to five, and it really varies depending on that child. And the thing to remember with the preschooler is that they're gonna tolerate separation anxiety a little bit better than the toddler, thank heavens. So what you really wanna remember about separation anxiety are those stages and how the child is expected to act in those. So with the preschooler, with the protest stage, that's the first stage, when that parent's removed, it's gonna be less intense compared to like with the toddler. Like the toddler freaks out, they scream and cry really loudly, and they're hard to calm down. But with the preschooler, they're gonna cry quietly and they're gonna act out. Now the despair and detachment stage is going to be the same as the toddler. Now one thing you want to remember about our preschooler is that they are magical thinkers. Definitely sear that in your brain because we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. So the preschooler may be concerned that their parent may never return or that they are hurt or something's wrong with them. And I remember with my preschooler, whenever he was preschool age, he would think that I was kidnapped. Like if I had to go somewhere, he was worried that I'd been kidnapped or something crazy like that. So they are magical thinkers. And so as the nurse, you really want to reassure them frequently that their parent will be coming back and encourage them to talk about the parent and avoid giving them a specific time when the parent's going to return because the preschooler doesn't understand time. So you can't say, 
you know, your parents going to be back at two o'clock. They have no idea what that means. Then we have E for Erickson and Piaget's theories. So with these theories, what you want to know is really that stage that that preschooler is in. So first, Erickson. With Erickson, we talked about with the infant, that whole goal of that first stage was to develop trust. Then they progress to the second stage, and this is when they're a toddler, and the goal of that stage was to develop autonomy. Now they're in this third stage, and the goal of this stage is for the preschooler to develop a sense of purpose. So we really want to get them there. So the stage for the preschooler that they're in, it's called the initiative versus guilt. So the preschooler to help progress where they're going to get that sense of purpose is that they're going to need opportunities to try new things, make decisions, be in situations that challenge them so they can be independent and uh, feel like a sense of purpose. And this is also when their conscience is developed. So they have that simple understanding of right and wrong. Now, if the preschooler is not given these opportunities to do new things, let's say that the caregiver really um, controls all the choices or belittles them for their decisions. They're going to have issues with trying new things, branching out, being independent, and wanting to make decisions. And then because of that, they're going to experience guilt. So whenever they try to do those things, and they're not going to have a sense of purpose. Now, what are some interventions that we can help the preschooler where they can have a sense of purpose so they can progress to that fourth stage with the school age child? Well, one thing you can do is to encourage play for the preschooler. Preschoolers learn by playing. They love playing and that will give them opportunities to try new things, to do things. So you want to make sure you encourage that along with imaginary play because remember, they're magical thinkers. So encourage that. Also give them freedom within reason to try new things and to make choices. Allow them to pick. And if they do fail, try to avoid criticizing them, but encourage them and try to accept the choices that they make and avoid trying to control all aspects of choices, but give them some freedom to make those. Then we have Piaget's theory. And with this, the preschooler is in the pre-operational stage. So this overlaps with that toddler because this stage includes children between the ages of two to seven. And preschoolers are still egocentric, just like the toddler. So they only really see things from their own point of view. They can't see things from other people's point of view. But as the preschooler is transitioning from being a preschooler to a school age child, they're gonna be able to see things from other people's point of view. Now the preschooler, as I pointed out earlier, they are magical thinkers and they love to play pretend. They will have imaginary playmates and things like that. And that really helps their growth and development. So you wanna encourage that. And preschoolers are literal thinkers. And this is really funny. If you've ever like um, interacted with a preschooler and if you say certain like metaphorical of phrases that are commonly said, they will interpret them literal. And let me share an example with you. My son, it was like hot, you know, one day and I'm like, oh, let's crack a window. And he was like, crack a window? We can't crack a window. And I'm referring to crack a window, like put the window down, let some air in. But he literally thought I was talking about cracking a window to make us cool down. And the preschooler is also they think of things in an animistic like way. And what this means is that they will look at like inanimate objects, like their toys, and they will think that they are living, that they're alive and that they have feelings. And whenever you look at this word, it like has the word animal in it, the first part of it. So that will help you remember it. So they think it's alive. And again, my son, whenever he's preschooler, he would do this as well. And um, for instance, like he had like a little stuffed monkey. And whenever we would eat, the monkey would need to eat as well because he was hungry. And we really had to pretend we were feeding the monkey because he would get full. So they think of their little toys like they're alive. Then we have S for scared of things. 
the preschooler has real fears because their young mind has problems distinguishing between fact versus fiction. Plus, they're really creative thinkers. And some fears can stem from that animism that we just talked about where they can think that their toys are alive. And here in this example, you can see a preschooler with this toy dinosaur. It makes really loud noises and it moves in these abrupt ways. And the preschooler is scared. They think that this dinosaur can hurt them, which it cannot because it's a toy. This toy and it scares him. So I'm gonna turn it on and let it walk and I'll show you how it walks. <laughs> Yeah, that's what he did. Do you want me to make him walk again? No, no, Papa. They also fear hospitalizations and procedures. And this is really where you want to be thinking about as the nurse who's going to be taking care of that preschooler. So with hospitalizations, they can fear that the reason that they're in the hospital sick with the illness is because of a punishment, something that they have done wrong. And you have to reassure them that this is not the case. Also, they have a fear of mutilation to their body, especially with procedures that will have to be done, like those invasive procedures. So you have to take a lot of care with the preschooler when you are having to perform those. So let's talk about some interventions prior to like a procedure or during a hospitalization. So with a preschooler, you want to be honest with them. You don't want to lie to them. You want to explain things to them, but in simple terms. They're not ready for in-depth explanations. That comes a lot later. Also, medical play is very essential for the preschooler before you do a procedure. This will help them cope with it. So let's say the preschooler needs an IV. Some things you can do with like medical play is that you can get a doll and show the preschooler how this will be done. Let them participate in giving the doll a pretend IV. Um, let them look at the equipment, encourage and answer questions. Also, you wanna give the preschooler choices and allow them to be as independent as possible given their circumstance with their illness. And be aware that the preschooler can experience a loss of control. And this is where we have disrupted, you know, how they normally go on th through their day, like with play, with eating, and being able Able to do what they normally do on a daily basis and they'll sense that hey I don't have control of this situation and this will cause them to regress so be aware of that that was a big thing with the toddler but your preschooler can have a regression where they really lose skills and revert back to those um, infantile behaviors and then with time, like whenever you're preparing the preschooler for a procedure, you want to avoid telling them a specific time of when it's going to take place. Because again, they have no concept of time and they're not gonna understand it. So you want to tell them in stages about as it's about to happen and give them like a time frame where they can relate to it. Like for instance, let's say that they need their IV changed out. You can tell them, you know, we're going to do that after you eat your breakfast so they know okay after I eat breakfast this is going to happen instead of saying at eight o'clock we're going to do that they wouldn't understand that and whenever you are doing any procedure or something that's going to cause that preschooler stress try to keep the parent with the child if possible because that'll help alleviate and decrease their anxiety the next is C for child safety so where a preschooler is not as rambunctious and a danger to themselves like how the toddler was they're a lot more aware of dangers that can happen and plus they have some experience to know oh I shouldn't do this this is a little bit dangerous and you can work with with them more and plus they can follow the rules and obey a lot better however there are still some things you want to educate the parent about so they can keep their preschooler protected one thing is with like gun safety the importance of always keeping firearms protected away from reach in addition swimming they're going to be active swimming you don't want them to drown so you may want to encourage the parent to get them swimming lessons also, um, activities, they're going to be very active using those gross motor skills. So riding bikes, um, they may towards the end of preschoolhood learning to skate. So they want to make sure that the preschooler is wearing helmets to protect their head from any accidental fall with a brain injury, pads on the elbows and the knees. 
and teaching them about strangers, preventing any type of like child abduction. So teaching them never to trust people they don't know, never to get into a car with a stranger, and always educating the importance of never doing that. And next we have H for healthy eating. So thankfully our preschooler is starting to become less picky about what they eat compared to the toddler. They're gonna expand their horizons with their food and they're gonna be more willing to try new foods. Because remember with the toddler, they were very ritualistic, many toddlers, with how they eat. Like they'll eat just certain foods. They don't really want to try new foods. They're big about textures and how things look. And um, they're very specific about what plate they have for a certain time or cup or spoon or whatever. But the preschooler starts to chill out with that. And they're gonna actually enjoy setting and eating for meals compared to that toddler. The toddler I turn were like grazers. They'll be active, they eat, be active and eat. They're not gonna really set down compared to the preschooler, especially as they approach five. And thankfully by three, all those baby teeth have came in and that's good news for mom and dad because if you've ever dealt with a child who is teething, it can be very um, exhausting to say the least with some children. They have a rough time with it. So they came in by three and then about five to six, depending on the child, every child's different, they'll start losing their teeth. Usually those lower central incisors will be the first ones to go and then they'll start cutting other teeth and it's a lot easier this time around when they start cutting teeth. And you'll want to stress to the parent about those dental visits to maintain that teeth integrity and choking. So with the infant and the toddler, choking was like a big risk, especially with the toddler when they're starting to eat more foods because they're not really good at chewing and swallowing yet. They're still mastering that. Or a preschooler, you know, they have their teeth, they're swallowing, they're chewing, they're doing great. So they have a little bit of a decreased risk of choking, but you still wanna make sure that you're not giving them foods that could potentially cause choking. And you wanna teach them about the importance of not running with food in their mouth. Like for instance, like suckers. They don't wanna run with a sucker in their mouth or talking with their mouth full because preschoolers, they have an explosion of their language. They are talking, talking, and they may wanna talk with their mouth full and that could pose a choking risk. Next is O. Others are starting to become important for play. So preschoolers are now starting to transition where they want to incorporate others in their play. So before, like with the infant and with the toddler, they didn't really do that. Like the toddler did parallel play, but now we have progressed from parallel play to associative play. And this is at about three years. And this is where the child will be playing with others in a sense that they'll be doing the same activity by using the same toys or the same equipment, but they won't be working together to accomplish something. Instead, they'll be using that equipment or toys to be doing their own activity. And let me give you an example. Okay, we have some children in a sandbox and they're all using, you know, some shovels and some sand molds. They may even be, you know, borrowing each other's like sand molds and shovels, but they're doing their own activity. They're digging their own sand, they're making their own sand, sand molds, and they're not really communicating to work together with something. Now this type of play is great because it's starting to build those social skills and it's teaching them those early aspects of sharing and getting along with others. Then we have cooperative play and this is about four to five years. Now what happens with this type of play is that the children now start working together and playing together to accomplish something. Hence they're cooperating with each other. So let me go back to the sand example. You have children together and they are working together to build a sand castle. So that requires that they get along with each other, that they follow rules. You'll start to see a leader emerge and along with followers. And then they're all just working together to accomplish something. And then the next O is outline behavior expectations for the parent. So the parent just got out of toddlerhood and now they're going into preschoolhood. And toddlerhood can be a really trying time for parents because the child is developing cognitively, they're trying to exert their autonomy, they have temper tantrums, regression, negativism, and so forth. So it can be a time where it's really hard. But reassure the parent that parenting is starting to get a lot easier, especially when this child 
hits five years old. So to hang in there. But some things they can expect is that this child can experience what's called loss of control. And I hit on this a little bit earlier with the hospitalization. So whenever the preschooler, you know, is interrupted and in how they can play, eat, do things how things normally go where they have a sense of control, it can cause them anxiety where they can regress. So prepare them for that and let them know that this is why it's happening and to watch out for it. Also, they have those fears and anxieties that we were talking about earlier, and they can have aggression. And this can be due to modeling from seeing a parent who may be aggressive, so they may be modeling their behavior, or media like TV shows that they're watching, so they definitely want to um, be aware of this. And reassure them, like I said, that negativism and ritualism should be decreasing, where they're not gonna be getting a no for everything. And one thing that the preschooler can start having is nightmares. So um, let the parent know this and that if this does happen, that they need to reassure their child, listen to their child, explain what happened during the nightmare, um, let them know that they're there and help them go back to sleep in their own bed. And then lastly, L for language explosion. So during this time from three to five, this preschooler is really going to make some leaps and bounds in their ability to speak. So by the end of five, they should be able to speak around 2,400 words, and it really varies among each child, and speak five word sentences that are very descriptive, and they're even joining them with those conjunctions, and or but. So because we have such an explosion of language, there can be some stammering and stuttering by the child. And this is normal at this age because they're rapidly developing in here. They have this vocabulary in their brain. And so they have to take that and they have to articulate it. And they can have trouble getting that out sometimes. So reassure the parent that, you know, during this time it is normal, but keep an eye on it because we want to identify um, it early if they do have a speech problem so they can get a referral and help get it corrected so it doesn't progress into adulthood. So tell the parent to be patient with the child as they speak. Don't try to rush them or finish their word, but you know, listen to them and to not make a big deal about it at this time or make fun of them or scold them because they're just really learning how to put their words together with their speech. Okay, so that wraps up this video over the growth and development of a preschooler. And don't forget to access the free quiz that will test you on this content.